Yes. So it is time now, and we are the ones. We are wrapping up this series on From Pieces Into Peace. And I don't know about y'all, but there's been a lot of pieces flying around, <laughs> literally and metaphorically, in life and right now. So let us bring forth this energy of peace. I also want to point out, speaking of the creativity and the talent in our room, this beautiful quilt here that says peace. So when Karen Riggins, uh, another artist in our community, a master quiltress, is that a word, quiltress? It is now. It is now. Put it in the dictionary. So Karen, our master quiltress, heard the theme and came up to me Sunday and said, I got a vision for taking all these scraps of fabric that I have from my quilting and putting them together and making the word peace. And I was like, yes. So now, out of this monthly series was birthed another original piece of art. So, beautiful. That is what we are talking about today. How to move into that place of peace, despite the chaos, despite the overwhelm that we may feel in our own lives. And when we look to the world of form, when there is conflict and war and genocide and political violence and chaos and unrest all around. And what came to me when I was reflecting on this was this phrase, despair will not repair. I don't know about y'all, but my insight often comes in rhymes. <laughs> I guess it just gets my attention more that way, and it helps me remember it. So despair will not repair. If we focus only on the world of form and the condition and put all of our energy and tension in how horrible everything is, we will not be able to move to that place of repair without also being lifted up through hope and faith and a higher vision which love brings us to. So despair will not repair, only love can heal. And we are the revealers of love. For love is the very expression of life itself moving through each of us. So oftentimes our minds can get caught up in the chaos and the drama of the human condition. Yet when we quiet our minds... And we focus on the breath and bring ourselves back into this now present moment. There we can harness the energy of the infinite. This infinite presence that is love, that is peace, that is harmony, that is joy, that is creativity. When we focus in and quiet the mind, right, so that we have that single pointed focus, that awareness right here, right now, perhaps by meditating on the flame, the flicker of a candle, right? Everything else goes, whoosh, and we're right there. And in that moment, we are resonating with the energy of pure potentiality. And everything that we desire to experience in life, we can begin to create by being fully present in that moment and allowing that energy of peace and love and creativity to flow through us. So I wanna give you a practical example. Any of you who have had little children around or in your house or perhaps visited, you may be familiar with this moment. So a few weeks ago, Cadence was doing a beading craft. And she has these little um, containers, that's the word, that clip, <laughs> with little things with all the different beads in it. And it, beads everywhere, made all these wonderful bracelets for friends and folks. And then it was like, all right, time to clean up the beads. So in the hustle and the bustle, she grabs it all and she starts to carry it off. And then, whoosh, right, they weren't fully clasped. They slip out of, and then beads all over the floor everywhere. 
So first, and I'm sure this we can all relate to it, first comes the frustration, perhaps the anger, and then the tears, and then the overwhelm of, will this ever get picked up, right? But as a parent, and talking always to myself, what do we do? We breathe first, and we have to focus on one bead at a time. If you look at that, it can be overwhelming. And you see all the pieces everywhere like, this is never, I'm never going to get out of here. I'm going to be living and walking and slipping on beads the rest of my life. <laughs> and you know, when we start to try to pick up the pieces from that place without pausing first and breathing and kind of taking a moment to be like, okay, I'm just focusing on one bead at a time. I don't know about you all, but if I try to pick up the pieces from a place of <laughs> more, they just like you get five done and then all of a sudden your hands shake and then they all spill out again. And then it just builds the snowball effect, right? Because we are energy and our vibration and our energy affects everything. So that simple moment of remembering to pause and breathe and focus on the one thing that we can do in this moment is the key. And eventually, it will all come together. We are not still living with a living room full of beads, right? Allowing the peace of the moment to lead the way and remembering because awareness is key, to come back to the breath. That is how we can allow all the pieces to move into peace. And what's awesome is community, the energy of coming together amplifies the energy. So this is the power of what we call group consciousness. This is why we come together in this room to sing and to chant and to pray and to meditate and to bring our single-pointed awareness to the vibration of that which we desire to create, that of peace, that of love, that of joy. Because when we come together, there's an amplification that happens. And I don't know about you, but I certainly walk out of this room feeling so much lighter and amplified than even when I do my practice on my own. So often our problems, our situations can feel overwhelming, yes? Especially when we're just ruminating them on them in our own minds. It can seem too much to handle. Way too many pieces to pick up. Yet, in those moments when we pause, when we breathe, when we focus on the one thing that we can do, and then when we come together as community, all showing up from that place, we amplify the vibration of peace and harmony and love. And when we all do what is ours to do, one piece at a time, it seems like a miracle, right? Just like, was it just yesterday? <laughs> With the storm and people showing up and everyone doing the one thing that they can do, it happened like that. But it's time now to remember that we are the ones and we're not the only ones. Whew. Thank goodness, right? We get to join together in community and feel the energy and the enthusiasm and the power that can make the seemingly impossible possible by bringing all the pieces into peace. There's been many um, experiments done on this. Some of you may be familiar with the research that was done called the Maharashi effect in Washington, D.C., when a number of people got together and they marked and tracked the crime rate over a series of time. This was back in 1993. If you want to look this up, it happened in Washington, D.C. 
through the Sri Lanka Peace Meditation Study. Um, or sorry, that, there's two different ones. So the Washington, D.C. Meditation Experience was 1993. Sri Lanka Peace Meditation Study was in 2004. But what it shows is when we come together, and this group of people come together to meditate, it shifts the energy, and then you have the statistics of this research that crime goes down. And I know there's a group in Louisville doing the same thing that Kim has connected us with, and we're going to look to get more involved with that so that we can be a part of this amplification. So I want to do just a little mini experiment, you know, how I like to play, y'all, uh, with you now. And we're going to simply chant the word OM. Now, before we do this, and I want to just give a little context to this. So the word OM, according to the American Hindu Foundation, is defined by Hindu scripture as being, the original vibration of the universe. By chanting OM, the mind becomes aligned with the breath, which enables a person to get into an elevated state of consciousness called samadhi. And the activity of attaining samadhi brings the materially absorbed mind into focus and enables a person to have a single point pointed focus towards spiritual realization. Pretty profound for just saying a word, right? So I'll demonstrate first. I'm going to chant OM. And then together, we're going to chant OM three times. So I'll go first. Um, I invite you with me now for three ohms. Take a breath. Um, Notice how you feel now. I'm noticing a tingling sensation on my arms as if the vibration has slightly lifted the hairs on my arms, almost like getting goosebumps. I can feel a swirling energy around my heart center. I feel a lightness on my head. Take another moment just to continue to observe how you feel in your body, the energy around you. And with another deep breath, opening your eyes. Mm. So this month we have been closing each Sunday gathering with the song Om Shanti. So now we know Om means God or the originating source energy being. And Shanti is a Sanskrit word for peace. So we amplify the vibration of peace when together we chant Om, being, and Shanti, peace.
And if you're looking for another opportunity to gather in community to amplify the vibration of peace, I'm going to share this in our Facebook group. We'll put the link in our newsletter that goes out as well. But every Monday at 1 o'clock, our greater organization, Centers for Spiritual Living, hosts the Global Heart of Peace weekly meditation um, on Facebook. So I'll click the link to that Monday at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, Mountain Time, 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Yes. How do you feel now, y'all? Do you notice a difference? Yeah, I got a thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. So the key to bringing the pieces into peace is to drop in to the present moment, to focus on what we can do, And to remember who we are, the truth of who we are, that we are the one we've been waiting for, and that we are one yet part of a greater whole. So the ego would have us believe that we are separate beings, right? That I am rainbow in this body, in this form, and I am my thoughts, and I move through this world individually. And then we have to do it all ourselves. We have to do it on our own, and that there's a whole lot of struggle in the process. Because the more we struggle and the harder we work, the more story we can tell others to make us feel proud. (laughs) Whatever the ego would have us believe, right? And when we drop into the present moment and connect with the oneness of all, we can begin to heal that belief, that lie of separation and move back into that homeostasis, that energy of love and peace that we are. Moving towards love and creating a more loving and just world by acknowledging that we are one. So truly, there is no thing to be against. There is only seemingly opposing expressions of the one. And this one life gets to know itself more fully through each of us. So even in the midst of chaos, of transition or transformation and healing, we can lean into the truth that this too is temporary. Those beads will not be scattered forever. And remember, as Dr. King said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. How many of you have had an experience of life that through time and space and more Uh, perspective, you're able to look back and see, even though it may have been a year or a five-year journey that, and then the moment felt overwhelming, with that space and perspective, you can see, ah, the healing and the growth on the other side. Dr. Ernest Holmes, the founder of the Science of Mind teaching, he pointed us to the same idea when he said, there is evidence that humanity is evolving. I look to the day when we overcome our experience and rise triumphant over present limitations. There are mysteries, but now we know there's also law. And he's talking about the law, the aspect of life or of God that is the law of cause and reflection an effect, right? That always responding, right? So it's responding to our thoughts and our energy. So there's mystery. There's these things in life that we don't know, the unknown, but there's also this law that is not chaotic. It always is responding, cause and effect. And in order to abide here, we must have a very positive acceptance of the ultimate goodness of life towards which goodness, I believe, we are all traveling. We have will and choice in this life. But the universal intelligence must be the essence of goodness, beauty, and truth. So we are truly the ones we've been waiting for. And let us now begin to consciously turn our energy and our focus towards that of peace and love and compassion and kindness. 
and watch the transformation that takes place in our own lives and in the world collectively. As Holmes says, a shining path awaits each of us, and those who seek will find. So this week I invite you, when things seem to be a little chaotic, to drop into this now moment, to breathe, to come back to center, perhaps to your heart space, and then ask for that guidance ask for love, for peace, to let you know, what is mine to do now? What is the one thing I can do now to move towards this arc of justice and love? And I invite you to reflect on what do you need to do personally to experience more peace in your life? Is there a new spiritual practice to try, or perhaps a practice that you've fallen off of that, you know, back then when I would wake up every morning and do my morning pages, life would sure seem to unfold more easily. So is there a practice that you want to engage in more? Or perhaps there's something that you need to process that feels stuck, this block between you and the peace that you desire. And you're being called to work with a practitioner to move through that, to reveal that, and to unstuck yourself <laughs> from that block. So may each of us have the courage to take the time this week, moment by moment, to listen to that inner wisdom, to breathe, to come back to peace, and to ask what is seeking to be revealed so that we may be the peace that we desire. And by setting this intention, we get to be conscious creators of the grand rising that is occurring in our collective humanity by adding your peace to the peace of the world. So let's take a breath and bring this into prayer. So grateful for the peace and the love that is here now. So grateful to recognize the one life expressing itself through me, through all of life as love, as peace, as harmony. Hmm. So I simply rest in this truth that there is one, the one life that is ever available right here, right now. Mm. And I'm so grateful to recognize and to know that this life, this peace, this love, this harmony is all that there is. That any seeming chaos in the world of form can be transformed. When I come back to the reality with a capital R, that love is unfolding, that peace is unfolding now, and ask, what is mine to do? What is mine to do now to be the peace that I desire in this world? Hmm. I'm so grateful to know that I have agency and that I can choose this day to resonate, to vibrate, to lift up in my own awareness the vibration of wholeness, of peace, of love, of creativity. And by doing so, I am adding my peace to the collective, which is pure love. And I can't help but see that demonstrated. Because the law always says yes. So right here, right now, I am choosing peace. And the law says yes. 
and with great love and gratitude for the fulfillment of this word. I release it now into that action of the law that always says, yes, my beloved, it is done and it is so. And together we say, and so it is. Yes, yes, yes.